Hello and welcome to another Divinity Original Sin video. Now this kill list has been a little bit long overdue. It's taken me a little bit longer to do than the other tier lists just because I just found it incredibly difficult and I want it to be as balanced as, as, as possible with all these uh, skills and summons and I honestly I find it really really hard to find the right sort of balance in ranking them so yeah it's taking me a little bit longer but here we are and even now I'm partial to changing my mind <laughs> but um, yeah like I said the most the most difficult one to to sort of judge I think um, but hopefully hopefully we can get through this um, yeah as you can see on the left hand side We've got the tier list rankings, unique being the best, common being the worst. So without further ado, let's see if we can eat through this tier list without a hitch. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with I'm gonna start off with the easier ones. So dimensional bolt for me probably hits uncommon. It's something that you pick up from the very start of the game. Um, I guess it's kind of used as a filler for a summon, summoner if they haven't got anything to do, but I personally just don't really use this, or they use this as a, a way of getting a surface, but it's random. I don't really like the randomness of it, the damage is unreliable because you could be a magic party or physical party, and it's just, you just don't know what you're going to get, so I don't particularly like it, and I personally avoid it, but it's... You know, it's got some use that sometimes it can conjure up the surface that you want it to. And usually there's other things to be doing to fill your fill up the AP usage. So I guess it's it's uncommon, but for me I've never used it, but for some others I guess there is a, a use for it. And then what the the it's called Ethereal Storm. Um so basically it's the big brother of the single target one. I so same reasons I really did I dislike this is that the spells the, the damage is all random. Um you're not really gonna be spending a lot of points into intelligence as a summoner anyway, and the mages tend to have better options, so this wouldn't be even a consideration for them. So for me I think it's just pure trash. And then thinking about source, the AP, it's to me, I would just just avoid this at all costs, honestly, but that's just me. So common for the, is it unethereal or ethereal storm? Yeah, no, one or the other. I personally wouldn't uh, use it. Uh, we got some... Um, Door of, I think this one's called Door of Eternity, or Door to Eternity, something like that. What does it do? It pro prolongs the life of your totems and your incarnates, or your summons. Which on paper sounds really nice, but once you've gained the experience, you just don't really need to be using this. It's quite, for what it does, it's quite expensive at 2 AP and uh, source points. But yeah, like I said, you. I personally found like I never really you had the AP to be expend spending on this, and I never actually really needed to use it anyway. I'm wanting to get as much DPS from my summons as possible, which means using um, the AP to do everything that I need to do, and, and using superchargers, and then using like the like cheaper summon minions uh, to to maintain the DPS. Um, so let's just say, for example, we're a physical party. I'd use like a blood incarnate. I'd use the mosquito swarm plus ranged attack, and then I'll swap maybe to the bloated corpse, or maybe I'll start with the bloated corpse or whatnot. You know, and I always find that's a lot better, a lot better to do and. Yeah, I. 
yeah, just you just don't tend to need it, and, and, and for what it does, it's quite expensive. So for me, I can understand why some people might use, but uh, for me, I think it's just un unnecessary. So for me, it probably hits common. In fact, actually, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put dimensional bolt in common as well. I don't. For me, I think it's just yeah, it's just pure trash. If you need a surface, find other means. Don't need to use it. It's not even a good fitter spell either. Uh, da, 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 da. Cannibalize. Cannibalize into common for me. On paper, again, it seems really nice. You can sacrifice the totem or summon and use that as vitality and armor. 1 AP, so it's really cheap. So on paper, like I said, it sounds really good, but again, it's just one of those spells that just isn't really necessary. Healing in this game isn't that great. Um, only kind of semi-viable at times if you're using them offensively, which this one just doesn't do. Um, but yeah, defensives, defensives aren't all that fantastic if you know what you're doing. Uh, so for me, it's it probably hits the common. And also you pick it so late in the game as well. You really, you want to be offensive and then keep your foot on the throat of your opponent. And uh, yeah, honestly, like the later in the game you are, like the more glass cannon the game sort of becomes you one shot them or they one shot you so cannibalize common uh, planner gateway not really something i've used i know it can be useful if you if you are using apotheosis because it just becomes three but I've always been able to negotiate the game very, very comfortably without such a thing, with the jumps, with your never swaps, etc. I've never even needed to entertain anything like this. So, as far as I'm concerned, it's straight into the common. Uh, yeah, just not needed, just not necessary. Uh, Rallying Cry. Rallying Cry, it's going to go in the Uncommon, I think it's pretty awful. Um, you can pick this up at level 4 and I guess for a period of time it might be useful. Um, it heals and restores magic armor dependent on the, the amount that's healed or restored is dependent on the number of friendly enemies in the radius. So it can be really powerful or it can be pretty weak, but you can use this offensively, I guess, too, but it's kind of meh. But yeah, the only real time you're going to be using this is very early game if you don't have like a lot of uh, magic armor options, I guess. But that's kind of like being, it's kind of being kind to Rally and Cry. Um, yeah, for the most part, it's going to be useless. You're not really going to be using it. Again, apart from early game, maybe. But, uh, uncommon. Uncommon for me. Um, what are we going to go to now? Uh, let's do Soulmates. I'm sure everybody loves Soulmate. And I really, really like the spell. It's, uh... It's got so many different uses, and that's what I like about it. But, but unfortunately, those kind of spells taper off once you learn that it's just about brute force damage. So, what does it do? It kind of links links between the caster and the targets, and all restore heals. Armors are copied onto the chain target, so it's it's really quite nice. 
but um, as you know, for the most part, the heals are not that super useful, and restores and armor is not that fantastic either. But some of the good, the really cool things about this is that you can use this to sort of. I mean, if you want to do this route personally, it's not for me. But like, you can chain this to to, to an undead enemy or something, then sort of drink health potions or whatnot. Um, that'll end up doing physical damage or you know heals or whatever. Uh, but the thing that makes it most useful is the fact that it cleanses a bunch of nasty crowd control, notably stunned and knockdown. So I think all in all it probably hits the rare tier. But I think that is really as high as the ceiling can go for something like this. It's purely not purely defensive it's majority of the time is defensive and it comes with a couple of it comes with a couple of cc cleansers and i think if it didn't provide that i'd probably be ranking it lower like i said there's a lot of really cool things you can do with it but really it's not majorly impactful but it's really it's a really really cool spell uh what are we going to now? Uh, Dominate Mind. Probably one of the weakest crowd controls in the game, in my view. So, I know a lot of people like Charm, but I personally don't like it for a number of reasons. This costs free AP to use, which is pretty horrendous if you compare it to a lot of other crowd controls, which is a lot more reliable. The other thing is that, is that it does turn an enemy into an ally, which is a pro and a con. If you turn them into an ally, there's a number of spells that won't actually hit that target that I would want to be hitting. So that's another reason why I don't I don't like charm. But mostly for this one, there's there's better better crowd control options that are cheaper or that do damage as well. So for me, I I put it in common because I think it's it's awful in, in comparison to what what else you could be using like even if you're a summoner it's most summoners run pawn which means one point into scoundrel you're much better off throwing chloroform at least you'll do some magic damage it's one ap it's hard crowd control and you can still hit that enemy if you if you decide that you want to so it's just largely inferior to to many other options so straight in common for me What else we got here? We got Supercharger. I'm a big fan of Supercharger. It gives the summon or totem 100% additive damage. Always a very, very nice boost. For 1 AP, you pick this up very, very early in the game. You're kind of going to be consistently using it. Really good in squeezing out that extra AP, especially with the likes of Bloated Corpse. Works particularly well there. You know, all your like major, major, um, major buff incarnates with like the with Necrofire, etc. So, I guess squeeze some extra death sword damage from there. So, I, I personally like it for one AP, it's really, really good. And you can, you can double up on a double up on it as well, which is something I not always known. So, you can cast this like pre-combat cast it again so that's like 200 percent if you i mean if other party members happen to have it as well you could keep stacking it but i've never really got that far i think as much as much as i would kind of implement it is maybe if i have time to use it before combat and then again during combat so really buff the damage but yeah for me legendary uh inner demon inner demon is picked up in the second act there is a way to get multiple of these for your party 
What does it do? It increases your magic armor total and gives you a very, very small intelligence buff. So it's defensive and slightly offensive at the same time. We like a little bit of offense. Um, one AP, one source point. So it's it's you know, relatively kind. Though I think the likes of um, peace of mind is is still going to be better in terms of offense. And usually uh, you would prioritize that first unless you know that you. You're gonna do both, so it's 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 okay, you know. It's nice little magic armor buff and a little bit of offense whilst doing so. So probably just about as makes epic. Um, we have the elemental totem. Elemental totem for me hits legendary. Now, if you just look at it baseline, it's pretty poor. In the past, I would have ranked it a lot lower, but the utility it brings is underrated and underused. So, two of the things that that really bump up for me is the fact that you can use it for never swaps. You can cast one or two of these pre-combat, have some extra targets for... Um, for never swapping and, and then the other one is the fact that you can kill them really easily you can kill them whilst doing aoe damage to the enemy or you can like i don't know for example maybe use like searing daggers or barrage or ricochet you can like do damage kill the totem extend your turn so that is where it is excellent um, and obviously it's just got the little bit of chip damage that it does naturally. So essentially you got like a small little bit of damage and then great utility and ways of extending your turns. So for me that's what really gives it great value. So for me it hits a legendary. And, and the same for Totems of the Necromancer. Now there's pros and cons against the, the standard Totem. So this is quite expensive, free source points, free memory, um, but I suppose if you're going for this, there's a bunch of other source that you can invest into. So it's not going to harm your build massively, I don't think. Getting 5 points into Necromancer is a bit horrible, though, but once you've, got, once you've maxed out your summoning, as a physical summoner, you, you know, there's not... And there's nothing really else apart from warfare that would really increase damage. So the five points into necromancer is not going to kill you in terms of your damage. So it's not. It's nothing to really stress about there. And then the other sort of thing to think about is the AP. It is two AP, just same as the elemental totem. But you know, if you're running elemental affinity, this can be one AP, which is becomes really efficient. Um, so what does it do? So it, it, it's, its power kind of is dependent on the number of corpse, corpses and enemies inside of the fight. So the more enemies the better, the more totems there is, the more damage that you can do. But again, it's got the same same wins as the elemental totems. Is that you can use it for never swap and you can use them to kill. So you can, you can cast this on your turn. You can then have your following teammates use the totems that was put out and extend the turn. So you can get a lot of damage from it and then you can extend the turn. So for me, it probably hits legendary as well. So what kind of makes it legendary and compared to the elemental totem is, well, the elemental totem you can use for a long time. An elemental totem you're gonna to be using inside of magic parties. So really, the, the, when you back up the Totems of Necromancer inside of a physical party, you'll drop the Elemental Totem. Because they basically just do the same job. Um, and yeah, so, the, so the, the investment is a lot higher, but the AP potential is lower. So I think it's on balance of everything and... Uh, 
they're, they're about the same sort of tier-ish, in my opinion. <clears throat> right, so it looks like everything left is just summons or summon related. Right, okay, so let's get into this real quick. So the cat is in common, pretty useless. The condor, overall pretty useless, is straight into common. Um, I'll, yeah. So, so these these two for me are straight into common, just simply because there's no reason to ever use them above the incarnate. No reason. Uh, what else we got to be got? Well, the bloated corpse for me is probably unique. Probably his unique because it's 200% damage. Uh, 1 AP, creates blood surface. You can use this on any corpse, whether it's been like exploded or whatnot. So that's one serious advantage it does have over corpse explosion. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, like I said, the utility it brings, the blood, the blood, the, the AOE damage, the amount of damage, um, one necromancer is all it costs to have, and yeah, it's really nice to keep your DPS high. Like so, what, like I said, the way that I like to use it is is if I've used the incarnate. To, to start off the fight, I've used up two ranged spells, whatever they are, and then I can always just drop into this to drop into the uploaded corpse with maybe like a supercharger, keep damage up, get some blood on the ground, whatnot. I really, really like this. For me, it's unique. <clears throat> uh, da, 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 da. Right, so I did have a little look at this. And this is one of the reasons why there's been a little bit of a delay with making this tier. This is I've ne never really looked at the. Is this called the mechanical bomber or something? Bomber. This this little scoundrel one costs free scoundrel, which is quite expensive for a summoner to get. But um, yeah, so I had a look at it, and it, it's it works very very similar to the bloated corpse is that it does a an aoe a, aoe explosion uh does fire damage the radius is is larger than the bloated corpse you can maneuver this little bomber dude however it is far inferior to the bloated corpse in terms of damage and in terms of that the player corpses corpse cost one AP this cost two AP which makes it quite expensive so yeah it, it, it's it's far inferior to that and then also thinking about it can you justify using this over a necrofire or a fire slug uh, the answer was just a resounding no which makes it completely useless so for me it's it's common Uh, we got the Dragonling. Dragonling. I think it's more suited to mixed parties, but again, it comes down. It boils down to the question: Can you justify using this over Necker Fire Infusion or Fire Slug? Because the Dragonling plays around a lot of fire damage. And again, the answer is no, very similar to the bomber here. But one thing it does kind of have, which is kind of nice, is Firebrand. So I would say, like, if you could use this as like a non summoner for the Firebrand, but I mean, really, am I really going to spend 2 AP for, for a weak ass summon just for Firebrand? The answer is no. So again, unfortunately, 
it falls down the priority list, which means it's, for me, it's common. More for fun, by all means, play it. Play it, use it for fun, but it's not getting ahead of the, the incarnate and it's not gonna get ahead of the uh, fire slug either. I'm assuming you're only using it in fire parties. And even, even if you're not, you have, there's just better options at the time. So, yeah, for me, it's just a no-go. Uh, we got the Blob. Blobby here. Blobby here does earth damage. Um, you can fling this, so there's a little bit of, like, it's not just summoning. You get the sort of summon and sort of do damage at the same time, so that's kind of cool. But even then, it's just... You can't justify in, in using it really. Um, unfortunately, at the time you sort of get this, it's just outclassed by the source options that's going to do more damage uh, for you. So, yeah, again, for me, I've never really played with it or used it. Again, I see it more of as a fun, fun option. So Blobby goes in common. Uh, next I'm going to touch on the Bone Widow. Uh, Bone Widow looks awesome. A little bit of a crowd control sponge because it doesn't actually have magic armor. Um, very single target focus, which really hurts it. it. Does cost two AP, but again, can can stand in blood and have elemental affinity for it to cost one AP. The only the only times I I can really see you using this is is sort of more extended fights. So, like I said, it always it always makes sense for the most part. For the general rule is, you can pre-buff your your incarnate. The incarnate lasts ten turns. The 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 widow, the slug, the plants they only last six turns, which is a little bit more. A little bit more difficult to set things up at the start, but in damage comparison, if you can fully buff your incarnate, your incarnate is going to be stronger than the other summons. However, on base level, the other the other summons are going to be stronger than your incarnate. So if you can always pre 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 summon pre buff, it always makes sense. To do your incarnate or start off with the incarnate and then you compare the bone widow's damage to the 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 damage of the bloated corpse it's far inferior so it doesn't even fit in second priority of a physical damage dealing summoner and this is why i say in extended fights you might end up using it after you've blew up your corpse because it's a cheap summon. So, for the most part, you're not really going to see much play with the, with the Bone Widow. Um, the times that you will was maybe if you get caught off guard and you got to do a bunch of crowd control teleporting etc and you don't have a priest and you don't have an incarnate out already <clears throat> then at times then you might want to use your bone widow you might use the the corpse who knows but for those moments like that is the only time you're really going to be seeing play if if your fights tend to be within one or two rounds but but yeah for the most part, if you're killing things in like a round or two, you're not really going to see play with the Bone to bone Widow. But if you're going for longer fights, yes, you'll probably see more more time to sort of play, play it. 
Um, it's not really worth using, honestly, as a non-summoner type. So I'd say probably uncommon for the bone, for the Bone Widow. Uh, next I'm gonna rank is the flower, the hungry flower I think it's called. So this costs two AP as well, but it also costs source points. Um, it's got a couple of night. It's got a couple of AOE abilities, which kind of makes it stronger than the Bone Widow is a better option. However, like the, the the fact that you can use Elemental Affinity a lot more reliably makes it a little bit easier to reduce the AP. However, yeah, so, so AOE front damage, this is going to be better for sure. But you kind of look at it's it's gonna play like second fiddle to to whatever your party wants. So seeing that the flower does magic damage, you it, it, and also it does depend on if you're playing with pet power or not. I am doing this list based on not having it. So if you're looking at magic parties. I think the incarnates, the incarnate um, alternative to this is always going to be stronger than the the flower plant here. So it's going to play play second fiddle. Pretty much exactly, pretty much the same role as the bone widow would play, only that the the flower would. Um, would be more at the priority list because there's no bloated corpse to use. So it is, I would say it is inherently stronger than the Bone Widow, but I don't think it's that much better to, to put higher. And again, it just like I said, it just suffers with the same issue that it's just outclassed by the incarnates. Uh, next, I'm going to be ranking the fire slug. Fire slug. Fire slug is much better than the other two summons because it combos with the fire traps which is pretty explosive to say the least also this is one ap one source point so in fact it completely outclasses these two um but the problem with the fire slug is there is a number of combos to use the traps and it is actually inferior option to the necro fire. So, what like one of the combinations, right? To to start off with fights for a a trap summoner is to pre summon incarnate, buff up the summon, go with the necro fire, and cast a fireball. Already at the beginning of the fight, you already have the surface down from the incarnates and having done whatever damage it is and then everybody can use the traps on that surface that surface damage is going to be a lot more than what the fire slug can do for traps now if you're in a situation where you're not able to use the the necrofire for whatever reason you can always then or you can so either that or if you want this you want a summon to be acting second in combat because you have to you have to summon them during during the combat then you can always still do the traps with the with the fire slug if you want the fire slug to be acting in second so there's two ways to do it so you either pre-summon Necrofire buff cast fireball then combat starts or you 
enter combat, put out the traps, use the fire slug to explode the traps. So the first option is going to do more damage, but that's not always possible to do, and the alternative is to use in the fire slug. So because again it is outclassed by the by the uh, incarnates, but it is most definitely better than these two options. I have put it into rare. Maybe there's an argument for epic, but. All in all, the summons and the incarnate is not that strong. Like, in terms of scaling and damage from builds, it's not as strong as other builds. So I can't really rank them too highly. And like with the like with traps, for example, that really gives it a boost, but it's it's only super super strong because it's comboing with another spell i don't know if that really makes sense or not but yeah for me for me fire slug hits rare and then we have the incarnate who i would probably put in epic on like i've already said on base alone the incarnate is inferior to the summons, but because of the sheer fact that you can buff him with a bunch of stuff and he can become versatile, he therefore ranks a lot higher than these guys. And the fact that you can set up with him pre-combat a lot more reliably gives him the edge over the other summons. So then we got the the incarnate buffs itself so we got the two we got the ice and the water infusion both hit the common because water is terrible in this game the, the spells that are given to the water and the ice infusion are terrible they're heals and we already know how we feel about heals so they make the common there's literally no reason to ever have this and Uh, the poison so there's a poison poison infusion and the electric infusion are going to both go into uncommon reason being again they are just outclassed so the way i'm sort of judging is is from like level one to like level nine ten uh so if you're being optimal, the best the best incarnate to be using very early game is the oil infusion. I don't really think there's anything with earth resistance. So as and when you should always be using the oil infusion because it starts off with 10 plus in Geomancer and has a an AoE spell. The electric and the poison are pretty much single target, and I've already touched on the water ones. So for me, the fire infusion is the best one to go for. Fire infusion is epic for me for the. Oh, no, 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 no. Um... Yeah. Yeah, the fire so the fire infusion does outclass all the other infusions. It's not as good as the oil infusion, but if you have experience of playing summoner, sometimes fights go on a little bit longer. So let's just say first round you use your oil infusion, you cast uh, fossil strike plus the ranged attack next turn. Right, so you want to keep up your DPS, so you use the fire infusion so he can use ranged attack plus fireball. That's that's in the way that you want to be using them. So for the most part, start off with the oil infusion and then you're switching to fire. Just to keep up the DPS and the AoE as well. Obviously sometimes there are resistances, but you know. 
So that's really the only reason that you have these on your bar is to switch, not just necessarily start off with. You you have them on the bar to to keep up the the DPS, which is what you're going to be getting from your AOE attacks, which is what the oil infusion and the fire one does provide. The others are way inferior on that front. So yeah, I would go with. Yeah, fire. Fire infusion, pretty in the rare. So yeah, from like levels one to nine, you're sticking with the oil. You're then switching to fire. Yeah, I think that's about right. So fire infusion and rare. And then we have the four, four uh, incarnate infusions. I'm gonna put them all in epic so farsight power warp and shadow now i don't think they're all as good as each other i do think that power and farsight is better but not that much to put them up a whole tier so the reason why i think they're better is because farsight does more than just a basic attack and gives you an extra range attack and power infusion because it does give you some crowd control and small wind which is AoE. So Veral and Epic. And then it leaves these three Necro Fire Infusion, Cursed Electric, and Acid Infusion. Now these are again very very difficult for me to rank. If we were playing with the pet power, acid acid would go straight into common because the cursed oil just outclasses. So yeah, you pick these up. You're gonna be using these, I don't know, when you, once you really get your second source point, which can be like at level 10. Level 10, level 12, I don't know. So for me, I, I'm gonna go with Necrofire. Necro and Fire Infusion, I'm gonna rank the highest of these three. Reason being because, along with these other buffs to the Incarnate, it gives the Incarnate a plus 10 Pyro, which is part of the reason why the Fire Traps can, can do so much damage. And because it does, it, it plays like a huge role in getting that extra trap damage in the first place. It is purely down to this. Also, it provides fireball and epidemic of fire. So, how I would really be using this most of the time is precasting the fireball for the surface for traps, and then you can use either haste. On the incarnate or you can just accept that you're gonna have one AP left over one AP left over after you've used epidemic of fire so I'd probably say based on the based on the fact that it's it's plays a key role in in really increasing the damage of your traps and then can also provide necro fire blah 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 probably hits divine Maybe, maybe legendary. Sort of somewhere in between there, I think. Uh, Cursed Electric Infusion, I quite like. It gives Electric Discharge, 10 Aeroforge, plus short circuit so that's very flat on the ap so it doesn't actually require any support from haste <coughs> a short circuit it's very very nice also the advantage the electric one is that there's not really many enemies that have a lot of heavy air resistance and then just whilst i'm touching on these the acid infusion does come with poison darts which is pretty meh and then also comes with Acid Spores, which is a 3 AP ability. So again, if it had some support from Haste, then it's a bit more viable. But as you can see already, 
because of the traps, it, the acid infusion doesn't compare. The extra AP for the spores is, is kind of hurt its ranking a little bit. Short circuits like two, but you can only do it close to the enemies. Um. See, as you can see, I'm having some trouble ranking these bad boys. Uh, I think maybe, I, you know what, I think we're going to go with, alright, okay, so we're going to go with Necrofire in the Legendary. No. They seem too close together. They seem far too close together when Necrofire provides a lot more than the electric. Alright, okay. Divine, we're going to put ne Necrofire. Curse Electric's going in the epic. And. I think the Acid Infusion is going to go in rare. So just to clarify, like, just to clarify, yes, the acid infusion's next to the fire infusion, but it's more based on between levels one to nine and how useful this is. Not, it's not based just on pure power. It's based on like other options, the power, the the utility sort of provides to cost of spells and how things are smooth in that if it requires support etc so yeah here we are i think we've we've landed on something here so just to recap i'm gonna go with bloated corpse as unique necrofire is in divine supercharger totems and necromancer and elemental totems and legendary Inner Demon, the Incarnate, Power, Farsight, Warp, and Shadow Infusion, and the Curse Electric is an Epic. Soulmate, Fire Slug, Fire Infusion, and Acid Infusions in Rare. Radiant Cry, Bone Widow, Hungry Flower, Poison, and then Electric Infusions in the Uncommon. And then in Common, we have Dimensionable. Ethereal Storm, Door to Eternity, Cannibalize, Planar Gateway, Dominate Mine, Condor Cat, Mechanical Bomber, Dragonling, Mr. Blobby, and the Ice and the Water Infusions in common. So yeah, as usual, feel free to leave your comments down below. This was painful. This is really, really tough one to do. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and see you guys in the next one.